Welcome back to the PewterCast. I am Brent Allen, your host, joined by Ren Dax, my co-host. Ren, we got a kind of a special bonus episode, sort of, kind of, this week for our fans out there. One that you've kind of uh, gone on record saying you were kind of hoping we'd get to sometime. Eventually, yeah. Well, be careful what you ask for. <laughs> so here we are. We have uh, we normally have three shows a week. This one is actually kind of a bonus fourth one. Uh, it's sort of a part two, I guess you would call it, to our final thought show where we're grading out the Bucks at Packers. Uh, we had the the first part of that. We got to talk to Mark Cook, and then Ren, you and I kind of got to have our final say on the game. And typically within that show, we also get to fan emails and comments and questions and we just had quite a few to get through today so wanted to go ahead and cut it and kind of make this its own little podcast as we get through to it so uh want to say welcome back to everybody uh, if you haven't listened to the final thoughts episode go feel free to go back and do that it's it's uh it was good we had a great conversation with mark a uh, great conversation between us uh just kind of uh closing out that game so uh with that we always start this segment ren with iTunes reviews. And opening up here, I can see that we have no new reviews this week. Wah, wah, wah. I just looked. We have one. We do? <gasps> I just looked during the break. No. Which, I mean, I mean. That must be, like, so I mean, new. In between shows. <laughs> what? We're not recording this back-to-back. What? what we're, we're not doing this the exact same so, night that we. Oh, no, totally different day. We have a new one? Really? <laughs> Yeah, let me pull well, it up. It's, yeah, it's Chef. Yeah. It's Chef. Chef was nice enough to uh, – he left it Monday, it says. Interesting. Oh, it's just not showing uh, – if you have it, go ahead because it's not showing up for me right now. All right. It says it was phenomenal He's, is uh, his header uh, at Chef Aaron. Uh, five mm-hmm. stars. Thanks very much. It says Brent and Ren are fantastic get together and complement each other perfectly with humor and the seriousness. I've listened to this podcast since its inception, and it gets better every show. Uh, Brent and Ren know how to dissect every topic and every aspect of the game as if they were commentators. It's also fun listening how they read and react to other fans' emails, such as this show. And they give you their honest opinion even if they don't always agree, which is to be respected. Their intercast shows are a great interaction way to keep the hosts and the fans to get things off their chest, whether good or bad about the team, even though for us, more often than not, it's bad. Keep up the great work, PewterCast, with three exclamation points at the end. All right. Thank you, Chef Aaron. And I have just one question. What took you so long? No, that can't be his only. I think you're only allowed one. You're only allowed one. So... That's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So, we'll have to ask him. But thank you for getting to it, Jeff. I really appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, you know. What took you so long? <laughs> uh, yeah. The show, you know, he says the show's gotten better. And, uh, you know, Ren, you've, you've been on the show now uh, getting on about a year. Uh, yeah. You're closing in on it. And and uh, certainly, uh, certainly you've been probably the best asset to the show that we've added. But the Instant Cast has been a fun addition. I'm the best free agent signing during the off season that wasn't a free agent signing. don't don't say that because we know what's going to happen next season then <laughs> i'm going to get a job as a defensive coordinator of the buccaneers <laughs> for a truckload of money and hey listen if uh hey i can go uh, uh run a four three yeah it sounds good listen if i can be a replacement player for the buccaneers during the cba you could be a replacement coach i'm sure that that would work just fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> actually, I, I'm just now pulling it up, and I, I see chefs now. And actually, I see another iTunes review, Ren. What? Uh, yeah, I do. This one is from somebody called Not Ren, and it is a five star review. And it says Ren is the smartest Buck fan ever. That's true. <laughs> it says I listen to a handful of Buck pods, but Ren is my go to guy. When I'm irritated with the Bucks play, he always takes me off edge. Oh, that's a little one. Uh, dedicated just to you there, Ren. So thank you, not Ren, whomever you may possibly be out there. Sounds like a pretty cool dude to me. Uh, how do we know it's a dude? Because I wrote it. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I realized that I've never given a review uh, uh, from my new phone. So Ooh. I, I, I don't know if I ever if I ever gave a review. But uh, uh, yeah, it allowed me to. So well, Ren, I, I got a question. 
Sure. What took, took you me, so took long? So long. <laughs> I've been busy doing the pod. <laughs> Actually being on the podcast. Not, not a big uh, self-promoter. Yeah. Uh, well, with that, uh, Chef, uh, and certainly Ren, not Ren, uh, but Chef especially, thank you uh, for your iTunes review. If you guys would like to leave us an iTunes review, we would love to be able to read that on air. Uh, we especially prefer the five star kind, uh, but we'll you know we'll, we'll read whatever. Just keep it to five stars. Uh, but you can do that. Just go to <laughs> iTunes, uh, search for us. Actually, I don't even think you have to search for us anymore since they kind of revamped that app. Uh, you can you can rate rate us. You can review us. And hey, listen, if you listen to us on another platform other than iTunes, it's really cool. You probably still have an iTunes account. I'm gonna guess. Even if you don't, just go over to iTunes, leave us a review there, and then go back to listening to us wherever. And if the podcast app that you're listening on does rate and review or anything like that, go ahead and do that there. I I try to keep an eye on the different uh, platforms that are out there. Uh, Podcast Addict is one. I don't know if they do rates or reviews, but they're a platform we're on. uh, Stitcher, uh, Overcast, Jabbercast. Podbean. Podbean Podbean is, is, is is a pretty cool one. That one's... Uh, that one's getting up and going. We're uh, big news. We're about to be on Spotify, Ren. That's going to be a new one coming up here real soon. Uh, we just got to get a couple of things pushed through, but there's there's uh, not going to be any problems there. So you'll be able to check us out on Spotify, Google Play. I'm not really sure where we are in the rankings of Google Play, but I'm not really sure how they calculate that either. So uh, <laughs> just throwing that out there. I think it's I think it's uh, it's ranked how many times you mention your sponsor in a in a podcast. Ooh, burn. the more times you mention your sponsor, the higher you get. Well, we must be off the charts because we are mentioning our sponsor every chance we get, which is none. So, uh, <laughs> but hey, listen. I'm just teasing. That's just me being a little salty. <laughs> if you want to send money to us here at the Pewter Cast, we would love to cash that check and uh, promote we'll your you a business. Shout out. We'll, get, we'll, we'll do a full ad for you if you want. But, um, you know, we're not going to make it obnoxious. Uh, you know, hey, listen, I love hey, – listen, the thing about about podcasts is less ads, more content, and that's what we get to provide here with the PewterCast. Uh, but, uh, yeah, uh, seriously, though, you guys do that. iTunes reviews, we would love to be able to read that on our next episode. Uh, so we have that one. We had a question come in earlier this week, Ren, on Facebook from our friend Greg Francis or Greek Francis. You might remember this guy. I think oh, is this the guy that tore me apart? <laughs> Uh, when I was when I was guessing about what uh oh McKay did and who we drafted. Yeah, I think we we first heard from him after our Yucks episode uh, back over yeah. the summer, uh, which I believe was epi- It was titled episode forty. Pretty sure it was episode forty. Uh, you guys go back if you haven't listened to that. It was an interview with the author of the books the of the book the Yucks. Uh, Jason Buick was his name, and uh, we got to talk a lot about the history of the franchise. And things like that. But uh, Greg comes back to us and he asks this question. He says, what is your take on Jameis's brain fart plays and how to stop them? I'm just worried he won't learn unless he gets the usual Tampa wake up call of being let go to another team. He seems like he could be one of those guys whose potential never really gets reached, but is enough to stop a team from giving up on him, getting multiple coaches fired in the process. Uh, Well, you could not be wrong. I don't know. We've talked about this. Mm-hmm. You know, we asked Cook about it, and then I expounded on a little bit uh, on the last show, mm-hmm. uh, which was not literally thirty minutes ago. Um, no, not at all. <laughs> uh, I don't. I, I don't know, and I'm sure Dirk Cutter feels the same way. Like uh-huh. I, you don't like what That's that do you baffled have to do? look on his face, like every press conference that we're seeing yeah, him these yeah. days. Like, oh. I, I can only equate it to. Uh, when I was managing this restaurant and we did tray service, which means everything that you bring out to the table goes on a tray. Mm-hmm. Like you don't just take like a glass of wine and, you know, like like one drink or two drinks or like you take a, like uh, you grab a plate. You put everything on a tray. It's called tray service. No mm-hmm. matter what it is, I don't care if it's a salt shaker. You put it on the tray and you carry it over to the table on a tray and you take it off the tray and put it on the table. That's, but there was this one guy who just wouldn't do it, like mm-hmm. just wouldn't do it. And finally, I'm like, how many times do I have to tell you? Do I have to tell you 10 times? Do I have to tell you 20 times? Tell me 30 times. Like, I don't like, obviously, we're not communicating here. Mm -hmm. And but what (laughs) go go to? uh, Oh, man, what was that movie Um, with Tom Cruise? The Cuba Gooding Jr. 
Cuba Gooding Jr. Cuba when he was an, no, when he was an agent. Good call though. Good pull. Uh, when he was a sports agent. Oh, uh, Cuba, show Cuba me Gooding? the money. Show me the money. Uh, Jerry Maguire. Yeah. Was Cuba Gooding Jr. a few good men? No, but it was a guy who kind of looked like him though. Okay, fine. <laughs> No, but you're um, right. He's he's he was not in Few Good Men. No. Yeah, it was, it was like like Jerry Maguire is what you're thinking about of. Yeah, when he was in the bathroom and he's like down on his knees, like help me, help you, like right. help me, help you. I can just see Dirk Cutter having that conversation with Jameis like almost weekly. Like mm-hmm. like what do I need to do now for the second part of your question? No, I don't think Jameis is going anywhere. Uh, I. I pretty sure that everybody in the nfl has figured out that uh if your guy is can get into the top 10 and you know the big passing categories Mm -hmm. like every third year you know has a good year and gets in the top 10 you got to hang on to him you know you know you're kind of sort of bringing like the annie daltons the joe flacco's these guys are making a lot of money uh but there's still – well, I guess not with Joe Flacco, but you know, there's got this question like, well, can we upgrade? You know, Is this guy really going to be able to bring us a Super Bowl? I mean Joe Flacco did, but has sort of uh, fallen off the shelf a little bit at least as far as wins for the, for the Ravens. Mm-hmm. So I think that every GM and owner realizes that you just got to stick with your guy. You know, mm-hmm. uh, If you're not – if it's not a total implosion – um, then you just you just stick with them because they are because franchise quarterbacks are so hard to find. I mean, mm-hmm. do you want you know? Do you want to be the Dolphins? Do you want to be the Browns? You know, uh, pick a team that's that's not very good. You know, Forty uh, ers Who knows what Garoppolo is going to do? But they haven't had a quarterback forever. You know, uh, mm-hmm. it, the, the Dolphins, the Jets, the Dolphins have stuck with Tannehill for what like five years. Mm-hmm. I mean, this was supposed to be his real breakout year. Last year, they were talking about, and he did. He played excellent in the preseason, uh, and they did win ten games. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so, you know, he was supposed to take the next step. So, you know, you just have to stick with the guy. Is he going to get multiple coaches fired? As of today, I don't think Dirk Cutter's getting fired. I think there's way too many built-in excuses, and the top of the list is having your franchise quarterback not healthy for three games, four games, and then. On top of that, missing another three. Mm-hmm. So, uh, if you, I, I, I really would like to see Jameis's year. The first four games, take the Buffalo game because he got injured. The Cardinals game, and then pick back up with this uh, Packers game, and and then the rest of the four. You know, if he plays all four, which you know, that's a little knock on wood there that he doesn't get hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, take those games and see what kind of year he had. And sort of leave out the games where, uh, you know, he was just out there on, on guts, you know, and grit. Yeah, I, you know, I, again, I, I answered this in yesterday's episode that we did not record 30 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> is I think we're seeing the, the change. I think we're in the process of seeing the change happen right now. How do you stop them? Um, you remember Top Gun? Yeah. After Goose died, the the what the the commander guy said flat spin heading out to sea well no 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 no, but like after everything after everything happened right and maverick was like all depressed and whatnot and the boss guy said keep sending him up like the best thing you can do is just keep putting him up there he'll snap out of it like like that's the best thing for james how do you stop him you keep putting him in those situations and it will click uh it will eventually click and if it doesn't um you know it's it's going to take us a, it's hey yeah it will click it, it's it's going to it, things just have to uh, he's got to see it enough times and it, it's he's i think he's working against and again i talked about this again i think he's working against natural instinct and he's got to that like neurologically that requires new neural pathways to be formed right um and and that I, I, those I, things I it it's yes it does uh and it, it he's just he's got to get in situations where those new neural pathways get formed and and new habits actually work their way in um you know is we have po- seen his interceptions go down 
You yeah. know, he's making better decisions with the ball. Yeah. It's just it's just when he's in the pocket and being sacked and, you know, yeah, which uh, with and I've talked about in previous episodes, sort of that cone behind his head where he's sort of blind. Uh huh. You know, he you know, you say he has good feel in the pocket. And he moves around. He can except for that spot, like directly behind his helmet, wherever his eyes are, uh-huh. not like really behind his back, but right behind his helmet, which is usually the left, you know, the well, I guess their right defensive end. Um yeah, and it just he's he's like yeah. sort of turning into Jim Zorn. Yeah, uh, that Mark Cook talked about, uh, or actually not Jim Zorn, Dave Craig. They both played for the Seahawks, but Dave Craig had something like 117 fumbles uh, in his career. It's like every time the guy got hit, he fumbled the ball. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's he, when I talked about earlier how Roberto Aguayo, or not Roberto Aguayo, or Pat Murray has not uh, like. I don't bite my nails on an extra point now. You know, it's like, oh, Pat Murray's coming. Okay, cool. We're going to get points here. Mm -hmm. It's gotten to that point with Jameis when he gets pressure. It's to the point where don't fumble the ball is your first thing pops into my head Mm -hmm. is don't fumble the ball. Like just take the sack. (laughs) It used to be, hey, get out of there, make a play. Now it's like take the sack, don't fumble the ball because that will kill us more than, you know, just a loss of yardage. Um so yeah, he, I think that's where everyone's so frustrated is is the fumbles, not necessarily the, the interceptions when we're talking about turnovers. Right. Uh, and by the way, that does remind me of one other thing, and I would caution all Bucks fans, don't let the guys on TV know more than you about your team or tell you stuff about your team. Like, And specifically to this, you know, they said a couple of times that interceptions have been a problem for Jameis this year. And I would argue, no, they haven't been. Yeah, he had one bad game. He had one bad game where he had, what, like three or four? Three. Yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. Right. Now, when you average that out over the course of the game, over the course of the year, uh, I, I, still, I still don't think it's out of line for, for most quarterbacks in this league. It, the, the turnovers have not been Jameis's problem. It's just when, when we, he's our guy, he's on he our six team. six interceptions. He has six inter- on the year. On the year. Okay. Uh, it's less than one a game that he's played in. No. Yeah. One a game. I don't know. Whatever it is. Uh, yeah, no, it's less than one a game. Um, yeah. uh, he's played nine officially. Yeah. Okay, great. So less than one a game, and three of them came in one game. So, All right. uh, you know, listen, when it's our guy, it's our team, everything gets magnified. You know, listen, we know more like here's another example. The whole game, they kept saying Ryan Smith was pressed into duty. Do you know when yeah. Ryan Smith got, quote unquote, pressed into duty? Four or five games ago. Yeah, like and it wasn't quite pressed. It was. We we, you know, sat Vernon Hargraves or we moved Vernon Hargraves to nickel and, you know, Ryan Smith just happened to be the next guy there. You know, like it wasn't yeah, an he wasn't, emergency he wasn't situation. Really pressed. Yeah, he wasn't pressed because of injury. Yeah. He'd be there. If Hargraves was playing, he'd still be outside corner. Right. My point being, these guys on TV, they don't know our team fans. They if you're listening to this podcast, you already know more about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers than those guys who are on TV. Probably. Yeah. You, you just do. So, listen, don't let them dictate for you you know, your thoughts and opinions on this team. And by the way, keep in mind that they're no matter what team play they're calling or what, what team they're calling on, they're going to question plays. So, you know, yeah, I would just say, uh, and Greg, this is not directed to you specifically. I'm just in general. Greg. Yeah. Greg, please tell me how to say your name correctly. I'd like to know. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that Jameis to specifically your, your thing, I think Jameis, He's in the process of stopping them now, and the best way to do it is to keep putting him out there. That's yeah, what I think. Keeps, keep sending them up. Keep sending them up. All right. Well, let's get over to some emails. Our first email in comes from Chef Aaron, the guy who sent us the very fun iTunes review. Double dip it on the show. Yeah. And uh, he's got a long one, so let's see what he's got here. All right. Chef Aaron starts. He says, Oh my God, the Buccaneer way strikes again. How in the hell does this team lead in nearly every game, uh, every game time category and still lose? This is the Raiders game of last year where the Raiders committed an NFL record 23 penalties and we still lost. Yep. Yep. 
That's what we talked about. He says, I'm at the point where like Stephen A. Smith loves to say to the Cowboys, I'll say for the Bucks, what can go wrong will go wrong. I know Brenton Wren said that they still believe this team can go three and two in the final five games. So this is a question and a retort. Do you still believe that after the Green Bay, do you still believe in that after the Green Bay debacle? No, because <laughs> Green Bay was one of my was like one of one my of wins. The three. Yeah, I think they can go two and two. Um, yeah, I I think it's going to be uh, an offensive shootout with the Lions. Um, uh-huh. Matt Safford got hurt. Yeah, he, he may be on. injured. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that could help us as far as when you know. Once again, not wishing injury on anybody, but you know it, it helps. Uh, so. Yes, yeah, so with Detroit's defense being porous like ours, you know this. Who you know, like first first team to forty two wins, mm-hmm. it could be that type of game. And then of the three division uh, champs, I was going to say three division teams that we finished the season off with. Uh, I think the Panthers are like winning with smoke and mirrors. And as the Panthers go, or I should say, as Cam Newton go. As the Panthers go, if Cam Newton, mm-hmm. you know, s- starts getting sulky early in the game, you can win because, uh, you know, I just I just don't like his leadership style, mm-hmm. even if he even if I have one. Now, I, I understand I'm the outside looking in. I, I really only can see Cam on game day. You know, I don't follow the Panthers. Uh, I don't have like their app on my phone and I don't, you know, follow them as far as weekly. So like I said, somebody on the outside looking in, but you know, if cam's in a bad mood and he seems like the type of guy that could just wake up that way, uh, they're very beatable. Um, plus they lost, uh, Charles Johnson. Um, one of their, uh, very good defensive linemen, mm-hmm. uh, to a PED suspension and, you know, and their, their secondary is suspect. So, uh, I, I think we can go two and two, mm-hmm. uh, three and two. No, because, yeah, I was really counting heavily on on, on uh, Sunday's Packers game for that. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm right there with you. Three and two, uh, and the Packers was one of the three that I thought they could win. You know, I'll say the same thing that I said earlier. Every single one of these games that we're about to play, they're all winnable, and they're all losable. You know, we could go zero and four. We could go zero and five in the last. You know, in these last bunch of games, it's possible. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. think we're going to though. Um, you know. I, I, Two and three, three and two, uh, however that shakes out, however however it works out. Because here's the thing, I I mean statistically, I just don't think we're going to get completely swept in the division this year. I mean, we it could happen. I just mm-hmm. don't. I we've already lost to all three of the teams in the division. So, you know, the next games that we play are the second games for each one. And if we lose all three of those, that that literally means we didn't win a single division game this year. I just don't think that's going to happen. I think we're going to win one of them. Might be the Panthers. Might be one of the other two. I don't know. Uh, I still kind of, you know, the Lions coming in, especially now with an injured uh, Matt Stafford. Uh, Buccaneers have generally been playing pretty well at home. And so, yeah. I, you know, I think we're going to continue that. Uh, I think this team is, I, I am encouraged by everything that I'm hearing from like Mark Cook, whom we just talked to and, uh, from you know several of the other media, the people who are around this team, guy um, in the locker, yeah, like like this isn't this isn't a depressed team that uh, that seems to be just given up on everything, you know, yeah, like they're, I'm, not, they're not, yeah, they're not on some you know TripAdvisor booking uh, trips yeah. to the Bahamas the day after the final game, you know, they're not talking about golf and. You know, what are you going to do this off season? Like mm-hmm. they're, 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 their heads are still in the game and, and they're doing what they can. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I'm encouraged by that. So that, uh, you know, yeah, I do. I think in general, they'll go, you know, two and two now over these last four games It'd be two and three over these last five games. Um, so, yeah, I, I still stand behind that. But that's, you know, again, that's just a guess. They really yeah. could lose out. I mean, it, it they could. Uh, um, it wouldn't be unheard of for this team. And uh, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. So uh, he goes on to say the offense. He says, we can agree to disagree on whether Jameis being in there is the best thing for the team. Although he did play well, minus that one blender. He says, I don't know if Holly would have made a difference since we haven't seen him since last year when he was consistently getting blown up. 
but what a shock that Holly gets sick the day before the game. Hashtag Buck Luck. Yeah, I just – it's – what possible illness do you get that keeps you out for like two days, you know? I just I, – I don't know. Uh, the 48-hour you know, Bavarian flu. Yeah, I mean like I understand being sick, but to the sick report, you can't play a game. I yeah. mean I, it's just weird. Yeah, apparently it came up on like Saturday morning. You know, he, he came up, he came down with thumbs on Saturday morning or Sunday morning and just – you know, it was it was very last minute. Um, and yeah, but what? I mean, like like he couldn't walk. You know, he just was he so weak he couldn't stand. I just don't. Yeah, <laughs> I just don't get what you know what uh, illness could be so bad that. Right. Well, well, the other the other side of that is is whatever he did have, even if it didn't completely knock him out, you don't want to bring that into the locker room. Yeah, or in a closed caps- capsule capsule. Like the plane, right? Where his germs get constantly blown on everybody else, right? Right. So you know, I to me, uh, you know, and, and I think I just assumed that it was more of a precaution about not getting everybody else sick than it was that, about him being true. so sick that he couldn't play. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't think of that, and that that does sort of uh, hold water from what the way the Bucks handle uh, locker room illnesses. Sure. Uh, he goes on, he says, Evan Smith may have had the worst game of his career, at least as a buck. I guess. I mean, I don't uh, know. <laughs> I don't know. He was really bad. Evan Smith was really bad yeah. when he was our starting center. Uh, th- you know, I'm sorry, snapping the ball before the quarterback has even set. Like, it, Jameis was not in position. He was kind of turned sideways, still walking around <laughs> when Evan snapped the ball. So, you know, that's about as bad as you're going to get as a, as a center. Uh, I mean, we saw some some bad snaps by Allie this year here in his first year as a center. Uh, that was – Which he didn't for like the last like four or five games. No, we, he, we didn't. He, he, yeah, he yeah. really cleaned that up. Yeah, uh, we haven't seen a bad snap out of Allie, you know. I mean, and you've got to forgive those. You really do. Like, um, you know, now this one with Evan, that's – that's that just can't happen. But, um, so anyway, uh, he goes on to say the only thing that interested me about the O line shakeup was that they could finally run the bell, run the ball. But apparently that sacrificed Jameis's pass protection. Again, yeah. We talked about that. Um, he says, what in the hell is it going to take for both the run and pass game to work? I said, Jameis got the check down going, uh, to begin with and was, uh, taking what the defense was giving to him. I was pleasantly surprised Dirk had him do that. The offensive line was basically non-existent protecting Jameis. Uh, they kept ge- they kept getting him hit, and it looked like Jameis at times knew he was going to get sacked and did everything he could to make sure he didn't land on his shoulder, uh, which was smart on his part. Um, I I don't know about that, uh, and and I which to be part? fair, I didn't the idea that he was trying to protect his shoulder um, because I remember yeah, I having watching. thoughts. Yeah, I remember having thoughts of just going. He doesn't seem to be protecting his shoulder. Like, like I had a thought watching like the other way, like he didn't uh, not that I was watching those particular plays, but like just in general, he didn't you know, it wasn't uh, he wasn't favoring it or or trying to hide it. Right. The only thing I was curious about, you know, again, and I just had my rant about the TV announcers. They kept talking about how, oh, Jameis is hurt. Jameis is hurt. He's twisted an ankle. Jameis is limping. Um, You know, they might have been seeing something that we weren't, but. Uh, you know, I, I'd be interested to know, you know, we get our first injury report tomorrow. Uh, if Jameis is going to be on it in the ankle, it's going to be ankle instead of shoulder, which is next to it. It might be. I, I think I read a tweet, uh, that said, uh, that they're working on Jameis's leg on the bench. Yeah. I mean, you saw it like the guy sort of fell on the back of his leg, sure. but I mean, you know, Jameis's ankles, those things are made of rubber. I mean, how many times have we seen mm-hmm. him like? roll his ankle really bad and he pimp walks around for a little while and then you know you just kind of forget about it so i think he's fine Mm -hmm. i do like to say though i don't think dirt cutter has Jameis take do the check downs i think Jameis, uh after watching ryan fitzpatrick for three weeks sort of realized that hey you know that's that works as well Mm -hmm. instead of trying to force the ball you know 17 yards down the field into a smaller window just take the five, seven yards they're giving you and move, keep keep the chains chugging. There you go. 
Uh, he goes on to say, he says, Jameis, uh, sorry, Jameis finally had a run game for the first time in a year. And at this point, Peyton Barber should be getting the starting nod over Martin. This running back group is going to get blown up. And I think Barber and maybe possibly Jacquez are going to be the only running backs on this roster next season. Barber has earned another opportunity to start. And right now he gives us that spark in the run game that we've been missing. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I know we, we've kind of danced around this a little bit, but what are your, what are your thoughts? You think, uh, Peyton might be the only guy left on the running back roster for next year? The, I want to see Charles Sims come back. I really do. You think um, he's going to, I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, he had such a good year last year mm-hmm. and then, uh, this year it has not been his best, but once no, again, not last two years ago. Was, okay, two it years was two ago. years ago when Doug had his, you know, it, Charles Charles Sims and both Doug had a phenomenal, okay. yeah, year, All right. yeah. Um, so he's an unrestricted free agent next year. Uh-huh. Um, he's only making, he's what's he making? He's only making like seven hundred eighty thousand dollars, right? But that's his rookie contract. Like from wherever he got drafted, like that's just whatever he got on his rookie deal. Wait, no, so this would be the, point, he's making three point one million. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so this would be his his second deal, right? His second the contract. The point being, yeah. uh, and the why I want him back is because you see it like you get him in space, the first guy never tackles him. You know, right. you saw the screen game. You've seen it this year, even though it hasn't uh, – they haven't tried it as much. He hasn't gotten the ball as much as he did last year or the past two years. But when, when they get him the ball in space, the passing game, there's – there's not that many people are better as a third down back than Charles Sims. They're just not. Mm-hmm. Now, I understand that Jason Light and uh, Mike Greenberg are going to have a number in their head where Charles becomes too expensive. Mm-hmm. I get that. And Charles may want to go test the free agent market. I get that as well. But I would like to have him back. Yeah. Um, Peyton Barber will be back uh, because he's super cap friendly. Sure. <laughs> um, and I believe uh, he wasn't drafted, but – uh, hang on, see if I can find it. Sorry, uh, but Ro- Jaquiz, I don't know. I I think he sort of outused his usefulness. Mm-hmm. Uh, if I needed, like you know, I think Peyton Barber should be the second back, mm-hmm. and Quiz should be the third. But since you know Peyton Barber and Jaquiz are sort of the same back, do you need them both? Right. You know, this was the argument. Uh, going into the season about, geez, we're going to carry three or four backs. Mm -hmm. And then Doug Martin came back, and we kept all four. Uh, Which was a surprise to a lot of people. It was was a bit of a surprise. It's not not like mind-blowing, like, what are they doing? Uh But it was like, huh, they went that direction. That's weird. I thought maybe they'd only run with three, which is very fair. Uh, So, yeah, um I don't think Doug Martin can be back. I think his price tag is just too high mm-hmm. uh, for what he's given the team. I think this was like, okay, look, you screwed us last year, uh, and we stood by you, and we gave you the five million, six million dollars uh-huh. uh, that we didn't have to uh, now perform for us, and he didn't. Yeah. So I mean, he looked good. He looked good in the preseason. He looked good in the off season, but when we got to the real yeah. season, it just it just hasn't, uh, you know, and. And listen, I you know, especially he's scheduled, to make, he's these, scheduled to make six point seven million dollars next year. Yeah, they're if if he stays, that's going to have to be reworked way over, and I I just don't think that's going to happen. And you know, it's it's again, you know, Doug Martin's running struggles this year. Because listen, here's the thing about Peyton Barber and Jacquez Rogers. Um, when when Doug Martin was the starting back, those guys still didn't have phenomenal games. You know, so, it, you know, it's it's that question. Is it Doug Martin or is yeah. it the offensive line? You know, the first it, three weeks weren't it, uh... they, they weren't stellar, but they weren't horrible. You know, uh, but but with, you know, the the times that Peyton Barber has been in there, he's he's looked he's looked OK, but he's not been phenomenal. Uh, and same thing with Jack Quiz, you know, for for the the minimal opportunities that they've had with Doug Martin. Uh, but Doug Martin's just not not gotten it done. And. You know, I've kind of I've gone on record of saying that to me the blame is kind of about sixty five forty five between the offensive line and or between the people per, hey, run blogging for Doug and then Doug himself. Um, so it, I yeah I could unless a major rework of that contract happens, I could see Doug moving on. Um, I could see 
Charles Sims uh, pricing out, you know, testing the free agent market, trying to look at something else. I could see the the Jacquez Rogers thing ran. I think probably what happened with him more more likely than not is they would hang on to him at least through camp. He's under year. contract. Is he? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but they can they can get out of it with no dead cap money next year. Sure. But he's under contract for one point six next year. Yeah, so we'll see. Him, I think with Quiz, we'll at least see him through camp. And, yeah, and we'll see what happens. You know, yeah. uh, now we'll see what happens come the end of camp. But I think we'll at least see him through camp, regardless of anything else. And you know, you know, I've been saying, I, you know, I think running back is getting to be one of those higher and higher team needs come draft night. So we'll see. We'll see where we go then as well. But, uh, yeah, it's, it should be interesting. And, you know, as we said on the last show, I said I want to see more Peyton Barber. And as long as Doug Martin remains in the concussion protocol, uh, it, it's not even going to be a choice. It will be Peyton Barber. So let's let's utilize that as much as we can. And when Doug Martin gets out of concussion protocol, we'll, we'll talk about it then. Uh, so with that, uh, chef goes on, he finishes up here. He says the defense couldn't stop the run and was gashed for over 200 yards. I realized Jay Hayes outside of Gerald McCoy has paint cans rushing the passer and a good to great defensive line coaches can get sacks from street players and non pass rushers. Golston has taken a step back and he could get at least three or four sacks in a season. He's got none. Ayers is 30 plus years old and he's not the answer. Spence is a huge question mark with his shoulder. Hopefully he can finally get that shoulder right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, Spence, Spence was one of those guys that they really rolled the dice on with the, the defensive end spot, you know, this off season. Yeah. And it, that really came up uh snake eyes for them this year. Yeah, it really did. Them and uh, Jaquez Smith, uh-huh. you know, those were the guys were like, okay, mm-hmm. you, you are our third down pass rush specialist. And, what by you know by week three neither of them are on the team yeah and i mean you could say that's true of the offensive line and the defensive line both you know because they they didn't change a ton uh because they were expecting the guys they had maybe a little bit of a reshuffling everything was going to be okay but man neither one of those really uh really have been awesome this year no (laughs) Uh, the plans did not pan out exactly uh exactly so um, he says one of the biggest positives outside of the usual best players, uh, on the defense on that defense and Beckwith is the rise of Justin Evans. We all thought light reached on this particular pick with Justin Evans, but he is proving us wrong. Evans is looking like a cornerstone safety of the future. Yeah. yeah. Agree. You know, uh, really athletic dude. I, he, does he lead the team in interceptions? He Evans Evans is tied uh, at three interceptions for a rookie with it like like he's tied in the lead in the entire league for interceptions for a rookie. The Bucks does that make sense? The Bucks Buck yeah yeah I got you no but I meant on the team oh wait there it is uh, Justin Evans leads the Buccaneers with ten inter- with three interceptions. Really? Quan Levante two. doesn't have more? Quan has two, Grimes has two, McLean has two, and Conti has one. Levante? Well, how many does he have? None. No, really? I thought no, he he's, had... the, he's, the, he's the forced fumble guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, he picks up the fumbles and or forces them, and then he, he, he sometimes yeah. picks them up. And oh, Okay. Okay, yeah, I can go with that. Uh, he has one more question as he closes us out. He says, I hope it doesn't happen, but if Jason Light does not get extended... Who do you think would be a suitable replacement? Oh God, I I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really no I really don't. I mean, I'd have yeah. to. I haven't gotten that deep into my bucket. This is really the first year I've gotten this deep in the Buccaneers, as far as mm-hmm. like following this closely and sure. and trying to learn about all the stuff, uh, such as we talked about uh, on the uh, I think it was the Instacast. No, no, it was the uh, Buck in the News last week about how you could bring up guys from the practice squad with five games less and doesn't count, you know, to accruing for a, a, an NFL season, uh-huh. uh, things like that. Uh, a GM search, you know, and to be honest, if I did my search, I'd just be regurgitating uh, someone else's research, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if I type in, hey, who's the, who's the top? I could, you probably Google 
uh, potential New York Giant GMs. They just fired theirs, you know. Right. And then I could read their bio and what they've done and be like, hey, what about this guy? But yeah, I, I don't. I'm not that deep into it yet. So yeah, somebody good. Yeah, I I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't keep up with players on other teams. I certainly don't keep up. Bring with back potential Gruden GMs and McKay. There. Listen, let's just bring back Gruden and let him do the whole thing. Mm. No, don't do that. No, uh, no, 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 don't do that. Um, he, he does ask one more question, which I'm going to refuse to answer. He says, since it's officially draft season, what positions do you see us drafting in in what order? That sounds a whole lot like a like a mock draft. <laughs> Not Brandon doing it. I love for mock drafts. Not doing it. <laughs> uh, well, quarterback, defensive end. Oh, you're going to do it. Oh, you're gonna. Do I'm it. not gonna. I'm not gonna put him in order. Uh, quarterback, defensive end, uh, offensive back. lineman, running yeah. back. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, punter. We need a new punter. Draft uh, uh, So I guess those are the biggest needs. Um, yeah. uh, as far as rounds go. Yeah, uh, They'll be you, one might want to pick, first. you might want to pick up a defensive tackle, too. McCoy's getting up there. All our defensive tackles are pretty old. Yeah. Uh, Clinton McDonald's, I think, is the youngest, and he's like mm-hmm. like 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe he's not. Maybe I, I heard he's kind of young. But anyway, uh, yeah. But the first round, the first three rounds need to go something like uh, – need to be cornerback, defensive, and running back. And once again, like we like to say, depends on who's there – against the positional need yep. and where you got and where you got them ranked on the big board. So I think we should draft offensive linemen every round this, this year, I all wouldn't mind, offensive draft in all uh, offensive draft. I wouldn't mind seeing us go double chub. Ooh, that could be fun. I'm not going there. I just, I refuse. I refuse to go there. But with that chef, I will say thank you for your very long email. Uh, always, always <laughs> appreciated. Uh, next email comes from our friend Brian in Memphis. Oh, Lord. (laughs) (laughs) You see, Brian, you see what you've done. He says, my final thoughts on the game is that we are incapable of turning yards into points. Yes, I agree. Uh, I don't want to say incapable because we can get three. I just want seven. Yeah, that's probably what he meant, too. Yeah, I'm sure that's what he meant. 395 yards of offense. And to barely squeeze out 20 points is unacceptable. Ultimately, that's how we lost. We just didn't score enough. Please allow me to elaborate on my notes from the game. I think she says clear throat. (laughs) Does it say that? Uh, It does. does. Okay. Uh, Uh, Wait, I got to do it too then. Yeah, he says, Jameis played like himself. High risk, high reward. A QB, uh, a high risk, high reward QB that usually loses on the bet and the bet that affects the team also. How long must we wait for him to stop reverting back to his bad habits with the ball and truly take the next step in his development? I have always said he's doing it now. Uh, I'm going with 10 years. False. Um, I'm saying that's how long we have to wait. Oh, that's oh, you think that's how long we have if to wait? If he's still doing it in year 10, at the end of his second contract. Yeah. Then we'll... Uh, <laughs> then then we then, might look then, at drafting a new quarterback. Yeah, some some kid who's you know, in, like that, crawling on someone's floor right now in diapers. You know, I, I mean, it, it's not unheard because you brought up the whole Matt Stafford thing, right? And it wasn't until what was it, year seven, six or seven, when everything kind of really started turning for him. As soon as, as soon as he got rid of, uh, oddly enough, as soon as Calvin Johnson retired, then it, you know it, he really started clicking. Um, yeah. So and now uh, he's the yeah. highest paid quarterback in the league so until the next one signs right um so yeah i mean it's it it, yeah it's it's yeah uh, he's not going anywhere i'm sorry sorry brian i i think (laughs) and i think we're watching him take those next steps right now i really do and just watch these next five games be real interesting to see four thank you um It'll be real interesting to see. He says the offensive line didn't play great, but we knew that coming into the game with the personnel they had. Evan Smith obviously played the worst, but how high was our expectations for them to play decently as a group? Uh, We can point the finger at them, but we knew that this was our weak link coming into the game. True. Yeah, I I think the hope actually was that they would actually play a lot more decently as a group. 
Um, you know, our, our friend Derek over at What the Buck, you know, he says, you know, sometimes your best five individually are not your best five cohesively as a group. Right. So, you know, with this little shakeup, maybe we would actually see, even though they're they're not our best players, we might actually see a better cohesion on the offensive line. Uh, yeah. Instead, but- what we saw was our our good game got flip flopped with our bad game. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Plus, he was also uh, Derek was talking about having Joe Holly at center, sure and so were we the whole entire week. Sure, everybody was till you know Sunday morning. So, um, uh, he goes on. He says the defense did the best they could. Essentially, held them to six points. Truly, based off the Packers' offensive performance. Sure. Jameis's turnover gave them seven points in the block punt, put them at the forty-five, which is great position to give them another score. Throughout the season. I guess that means he's giving them the six points they scored was actually the one in overtime. Uh, I, I think is what that then is going to amount to. Is oh, it? because they didn't kick the extra point? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess. Uh, it says, throughout the season, we have put our defense in bad situations from turnovers and expected them to stop the other team from scoring. And this is an example of one of those times. Uh, it says, after all, all of that, we still had plenty of times to score when we were supposed to, but just couldn't do it. I stated that I think Cutter overthinks his play calling, especially in the red zone. The bot snapped at the three-yard line, should have been a touchdown. Instead, we kick a field goal, and that proved to be a lack of points that killed us in the end. Beat the Lions and go Bucks. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a problem with Cutter's play calling in the red zone, um, yeah. but I can understand your point. There was something else there. The that... bot snap. <clears throat> no, there was something else there you oh. said that I – didn't 100 percent agree with but yeah but you know he's he's right he summed it up you know oh the defense yeah oh yeah uh you know that's your job Uh, i mean i get it if i don't think the bucks have constantly put the defense in short fields i just Mm -hmm. don't um so but you know that's part of the gig you know that's that's your job as a defense you know it's those are the cards you're dealt that's that's the side of the ball you play and if you're going to go as far as to say that the that the offense uh, puts the defense in short fields and it's not their fault, then there's plenty of uh, drives, and I think it, it 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 there's plenty more drives where the defense had the whole field or their offense. Sorry, mm-hmm. the opposing team's offense had the whole field to go to drive, and they did. Uh, and not to mention, they did it when. You know, it's been a few times where it's been late in the fourth quarter and, mm-hmm. you know, one stop wins the game and the defense have come up short more than once. So I understand what he's saying. And I'm, once again, I'm not laying this whole thing down defense's feet like, oh, the, we're four and eight and it's a defense's fault. No, it's not. Uh, but uh, I think they're just as equally to blame. There you go. All right. Well, thank you, Brian, for your email. Always good to hear from you. Um, Moving on. Next email. This comes from Chris in Northwest Georgia. He says this. First, let me start with this. (laughs) The Buck in the News intro song. What is this VeggieTales Sesame Street opening? (laughs) You know, I I really didn't think you were going to use that. This is Chris. This is my fault. Because it's Brent's when fault. We, I just it is. Stopped. It is. It is my fault. It is because when we were thinking about it, uh, and we we're calling it Buck in the News, and we're like, "Hey, we'll come up with a better name," but it actually stuck, and I like it. Uh, I was like, "How about a, a, a uh, song from Newsies, which I have never seen?" Um, apparently, it has a huge fix cult. That. You've got to uh, fix yeah, that. See, it's great. I'm just gonna say, it has this huge cult following that everyone thinks. It basically, it's isn't it like a musical? It's a, it, it is it is Christian Bale's first movie, and yes, it is a musical. I understand Christian Bale's like there's a teenage Christian Bale in there, and it's years like old, yeah, and it's set like in the 30s, and I'm assuming he's a paper boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So set before so, the 30s, I think, and so. That's that's all I know about it. Except it was Buck in the News and Newsies, and I just like, how about a song for the Newsies? And Brent was like, it, it, it was like, I, song. yeah, it was yeah. like I gave him, you know, the the Christmas gift that he's been wanting for four <laughs> years and never got. It was like, oh my god! So it's my fault, Chris. <laughs> that, that intro song, but, and I don't. 
Huh? Every time I hear it, I'm like, Ugh, but then at, by the end, I really don't. I don't hate it. By the time it, it turns off, I'm like, oh, okay. You know, it is. It's catchy. It is. It's catchy. Everyone, everyone it's seems to know it. Yeah, yeah. It, Chris, if you've never seen Newsies, you need to get. And and they've got a Broadway show out with it right now. You need hey, to go back and watch the movie. Chris, it's, don't let the announcers it tell works. you. It works. <laughs> don't let the announcers tell you. But if you've if you've movie. here's the thing, if you've ever actually listened to the words of of the particular clip that I play, it says, "Now is the time to seize the day." It, yep. It's it's a song called "Seize the Day." Now is the time to seize the day. Uh, send up the call, fiddles, and join the fray. The fiddles in the background. With, yes, but uh, I know it, I know it's not very football manly, but it works for this team. And uh, yeah, you're right. It's Ren's fault. It's completely Ren's fault. And um, <laughs> he actually he gives us a, a song that maybe we might try. We'll oh. talk about that one here. You want to listen to it? Let's see. Oh yeah. Uh oh. Let's see if we can get. It. It's called "We Are the Buccaneers." Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, good. I'm like, I didn't hear a thing. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, I'm not going to play that right now. We'll figure it out. He says, uh, on the ses- by the way, it, you know, I find it interesting. He went Veggie Tales and Sesame Street. Uh, Newsies is Disney. Uh, neither one of those two. Veggie Tales is made by Big Idea, and Sesame Street is now apparently made by HBO. So, uh, I, I I don't yeah, because he doesn't know that. But he was sort of in the general area <laughs> he of, was, he hey, was. what is this like Saturday afternoon? Uh-huh. Don't do drugs. Lay off the reefer. Uh-huh. But <laughs> after I'm, school special. I'm going to give Chris. I'm going to give Chris credit because of the way he uses that to intro the rest of his email. Okay. He says, on the note of Sesame Street, let's talk about the letter of the day, and the letter of the day is A, A as in assignments. The Buccaneers offense cannot get their blocking assignments correct. It doesn't matter who it is, Evan Smith, Donovan Smith, Peyton Barber, or whomever. Kudos on using whomever. Uh, This is a fundamental football stuff here. There is a huge difference between missing your assignment and making, uh, between missing your assignment and making your assignment, uh, but they outplayed you. Uh, Assignments. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You butchered that. You lost me. It, it, uh, it's worded a little <laughs> weird. I think it, there's a huge difference between missing your assignment and making your assignment, but they outplayed you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a difference between the guy just beating you on the play and then you not knowing what the hell you're doing. Exactly. Like going right instead of left. Or, yeah. 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 Uh, so assignments. Uh, he says A as in adjustments. Mike Smith reminds me of Elsa from Frozen. He's sticking with the kid. He says, she has this amazing power that she can do amazing things with, but she's too scared to use it because it was instilled into her by the father, which is the worst example of a parent in a Disney movie ever. Moving on, he says, when Mike Smith makes an... Did he say that? No, I did. I added that in there. Uh, When Mike Smith makes an adjustment, great things have happened. But in the last game, begs the question, why doesn't Mike Smith make adjustments? We can talk all day about how they didn't make adjustments, and this is on Mike Smith, but why won't he? If anything, please have a discussion about this. I want to hear your thoughts. Why won't Mike Smith make adjustments? Is is, uh, Elsa's father worse than, like, you know, the stepmother from Cinderella. Yeah, she really wasn't a mother, though. And she was you a said, step. You, you said parent. Yeah, she's not really a parent. I mean, I guess she is. She has her own kids. She was good to her own kids. Was she? Yeah. Yeah, she had her own two little daughters. She was great with her own kids. She was just horrible to Cinderella. Okay. And that's an exaggerated point. I mean, this guy, the parent, the, the dad in Frozen, really... Really bad parenting. The the way he instilled fear into it. Anyway, that's not this podcast. Go ahead. Yeah, and since I saw it once a long, long time ago, mm-hmm. uh, I can't have that conversation. Why isn't Mike Smith uh, adjusting? I don't know. Um, I can't tell you that he's not, though. Mm-hmm. I can tell you that I've heard people say he's not. Yeah. I can tell you that I've heard people say that he's afraid to because he's a because he's afraid of the other outcome that might possibly happen. Um, so I don't know. Uh, it feels that way. 
mm-hmm. uh, because you, you seem to, the team seems to be getting the same result defensively uh, week after week after week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. Um, I, I have a theory. Okay. If I can, I think Mike Smith does make adjustments with players that he can make adjust make adjustments with. That and he I, trusts. It, yeah, like it, we see him doing all different kinds of stuff with his linebackers, with Levante, Quan, and, and Man, Kendall. That's true. He has adjusted from yeah. week to week to week we, in game. Mm-hmm. Maybe not so much. Right. Uh, we see him making adjustments actually with Justin Smith, or Justin Smith, uh, Justin Evans. You know, yeah. we've seen we've actually seen him make some adjustments with with uh, Vernon, you know, and, and how he, he moves him around to, you know, uh, to, to various places. Uh, so, you know, it, and, and by the way, you know, you remember earlier this year we kept hearing, you know, oh, Vernon's playing 10 yards off the ball, 10 yards off the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, listen, whether it's Grimes or Ryan Smith, somebody's still playing 10 year 10 yards off the ball. But I don't hear anybody still bitch moaning and complaining about that if people got hot on something and then they would just start looking you're going oh look he's 10 yards off the ball again oh look he's 10 yards off the ball like you know i i don't know much about defense i assume you probably can't play press every single play well you can i mean or it's, it's dangerous right so you know it it, it it and he's you know the different players are still you know still doing what they need to do so i would say mike smith does make I, I would I, I don't want to say he does I'm going to suggest that Mike Smith does make adjustments with players he feels like he can make adjustments with. Sounds good. You know I don't um, know. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's that's my best. See? Well, that's uh, this is another reason why we need uh, press credentials. Yeah, we can go ask those questions. We can ask those questions. Yes. So, how many uh, adjustments did you make in the Packers game? Did right. you make any adjustments during those last two drives? Mm-hmm. Was one of your adjustments was to tell Will Golston to, as soon as a ball hike, cross the line of scrimmage and go grab the center's butt as fast as possible? <laughs> because that's what he did. No, did he really? No, I'm just saying, you know, because he, like, he kept because yeah. he kept crashing and yeah. Hunley kept running around his uh, going outside him and running. Yeah getting first downs and things gotcha uh chris continues he says a as in athleticism something a lot of people haven't talked about is the athleticism of this team we have some quote-unquote great talent on this team but they are consistently injured i want to know if the workout regimen isn't properly preparing players or is it overworking them and creating a higher chance for injury i think this really goes to the strength and conditioning coach argument uh, right. That we haven't heard a ton of this year, but we have heard uh, it. I have heard it kind of pop up I've, every now. I've and seen again. a few grumblings. You can't. I mean, yeah. ev- every team has injuries. I, mm-hmm. You, we follow the Bucks. I'm speaking. I'm including you in this, Chris. We follow the Bucks close, more close, closely, closeliest. We more closely than any team, NFL team. Um, I'd be willing to bet if you go around and start pulling up rosters and see how many guys are on IR and see how many guys. Uh, I think when we played the Saints, I think they had like 14 guys on their on their Wednesday injury report. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, people get injured. It's it's sometimes it, it depends on who gets injured. Is sort of how the season goes. You know, mm-hmm. if uh, like this year, if Robert McClain got injured, they got lost for the season. That's not really too bad. You know, uh, it's not bad as as Ali Marpet going down. You know, uh, Jameis Winston missing three games. It's a lot different than Clinton McDonald not and Robert Ayers missing last week. You know, it it's just it's just different. So I don't. I am assuming there's tons of science that goes behind that. Uh-huh. Uh, I even saw a thing with Casey where they have like it looks like an egg and it weighs like your body fat. Hmm. Uh, they sort of cram you in there, and then it uh-huh. it, uh, it does I don't know some zero gravity whatever stuff, or compresses the air around you, and and measures your total body fat. And you just kind of sit in there, and it looks like it kind of looks like Captain Pike's wheelchair from uh, the original Star Trek series, mm-hmm. but white. It's kind of like that. But so there's lots of science that goes into this, and um, I've never. I've seen a few arguments over the years about, hey, you know, this strength conditioning coach is terrible. 
but I've never really seen anyone get fired because of it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I've never seen like the Browns or even like the University of Missouri or whatever fire their strength and different. If they do, it's because they do one of those stupid things like like trip a player running down the field or get caught. Uh-huh. You know, uh, you know, like that offensive line coach in Miami caught doing something stupid like that mm-hmm. on social media. That's why they get fired. I've never really seen anything where it's like they've become the scapegoat like ah, we had lots of injuries this year it's this guy's fault that's why we're not in the playoffs you're fired i just you know so right i hear you injuries are frustrating but i don't i don't think there's there's not much more you can do mm-hmm. to prevent them you know yeah they happen yeah all right uh next email comes in from thomas from rainbow springs florida he it's says, a new one, isn't it? No, no. He's actually emailed us before. Oh, sorry, Thomas. Uh, this would be a second email. He says, hey, guys, love the show. I emailed you about a month ago and will reiterate my sentiments now. We have lost eight of nine and haven't won a division game this year. And if we're lucky, we'll win one more game. Uh, we won two with Ryan Griffin, so I'm not entirely sure what he's talking about. But uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Uh, Fitzpatrick. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um, yeah. But uh, are we are we at seven? Wait, we're, no, we're not at seven to nine even on the season yet. Where are we? Our last eight, nine games, four, have we four won? and eight, four and eight. Yeah, however that works out. Uh, we're we're four and eight on the season. Let's. I'll, I'll agree with you on that. He says uh, I would love to see Gruden here next year and try to get Rex Ryan as the defensive coordinator. Oh, I wonder if that guy's <laughs> the guy that I've been seeing on Twitter. Uh, there's a lot of guys like him on Twitter. Uh, I Rex Ryan. Uh, oh, Rex Ryan. Uh, yeah, I've, seen I've seen a lot of people. Ryan, I've seen a lot of people up. going on about Rex Ryan as the defensive coordinator. I okay. My my stance. I understand people wanting to bring Gruden in. I don't understand people wanting to bring Rex Ryan in. I I get you know he might not have worked out as a head coach, but you know he's probably at least got to be a better uh, coordinator. You know, mm-hmm. um, some people might say that about Dirk Cutter. You know, good coordinator, bad uh, bad head coach. Leslie Frazier is another example of a guy that I think probably fits that. Um, I, by Wade the way, I, I'm Phillips. not. Wait, there you go. I, I'm not saying that I think that uh, Dirk Cutter is a better coordinator than than head coach. I'm just saying that idea is certainly out there. Um, but yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's his statement. He wants to see Gruden and uh, possibly Rex Ryan as a defensive coordinator. He goes on. He says, "I I can agree with you. Can't keep hiring coaches mantra, but I'm sick of being in the basement every year and having to wait almost eight months to see if the season, uh, uh, to see after the season. Wait a minute. This is worded weird. Uh, it, having to wait almost eight months." to see uh, the season if the season is going to live up to the hype the following year. Um, I said, I say this point as a fan. I say this as a fan. Swing for the fences and go get Gruden and lock him up. From the owner's perspective, at least he's going to put butts in the seats next year. Uh, you know, there is... This whole this whole Gruden, I know we you know we we haven't commented a ton on this and, no. and we won't right now. Um, but there there seems to be a third camp developing. You know, like there is the yes, let's go get Gruden, and then there is the no, let's stay with Cutter camp. There's a there's another camp that seems to be developing, which is the uh, it doesn't you know I don't want us to change coaches, but the Glazers are going to do it anyway. Kind of camp, right? You know. And I'm not I'm not sure if I'm in that camp just yet, um, though I might be possibly. Um, I, I don't know that the that the Glazers are gonna are gonna switch this over. I at this point, no, I don't think they should. Uh, I will say that uh, certainly not at this point right now. We still have four games left in the season. Let's see how they go first. But I uh, I have thought about it just from a a simple business standpoint, Ren. Like if mm-hmm. you think of the Glazers simply as business, what's going to put people in seats? What's going to sell tickets? And wins uh, wins will, uh, but you know, on a very short term basis, bringing you know, bringing a new coach in like Gruden, uh, specifically Gruden, that that'll sell you some tickets for the first couple of games anyway. Uh, people want to come see that, but yeah, you so. know, if Gruden comes in and and you know. Uh, 
doesn't go four and zero in his first four games, you know, we're going to be right back to where we are. To, you know, the whole other half of the family is going to say we shouldn't have brought him in. So, yeah. I'm not a bring Coot Gruden back camp. Yeah. Um, uh, even though he was strapped with draft choices or draft picks, yeah, because of getting him, uh, you know, take away a Super Bowl run, which is a, a little bit unfair. I understand that, but mm-hmm. it was his first year. After that, he's like he's. I don't think he's a five. I think he's below 500 coach. Yeah. You know, and it's like, well, he won the division two other times. Yeah, but one of them he won it at nine and seven. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, like nine and seven nowadays, you don't get to the playoffs. You know, let alone win the division. Year. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, uh, <clears throat> I and everyone forgets how much the players sort of hated John Gruden. Mm-hmm. You know, he's one of those guys that talks off both sides of his mouth. Yeah, uh, you know, will will tell me one thing and turn right around and look at Brent and tell him another thing, and we ask the same question. Uh, I don't think he's upfront and honest with his players. Uh, so before I get into that whole thing, I, I just I just don't like the Gr- John Gruden. Thing. Rex Ryan, I think there are so many more better. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did that on purpose. Uh, better candidates out there to run an NFL defense than Rex Ryan. I really do. Uh, I would have to do. I'd have to think about it and sit down and do a little research. And this would not be me regurgitating like a GM, like I talked mm-hmm. about earlier with Aaron. Aaron Chef Aaron's question. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there now. I think the best defense coordinator in football and has been for ten years is Wade Phillips. Uh, you know, he built Texas defense. Look at it now. Mm-hmm. He left. It's fallen. Look at Denver's defense. He built that. Took it to Super Bowl one. Uh, look at it now. He's gone, and he's got the Rams. And, you know, everyone's like Sean McVay, Jared Goff. Yeah, he turned Jared Goff around, and they are scoring a lot of points, but they're also not giving up a lot of points. Right. And and wait, you know, that's who their defensive coordinator is. Uh, so that would be my first choice. Obviously, he's not coming here, but mm-hmm. um, so yeah, I'm just not on Rex Ryan. I think it's just sort of a name, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I particularly don't really like his personality. I know a lot of people like him, but. Uh, I, don't know, I think him and sort of John reading. Gruden would clash. I, I oh, don't know that to, I, to see who would uh who looks yeah they would they would definitely be hogging the camera. Those both got those guys both love the camera. Right. No, but I mean even even put them on the same coaching staff. Like I I don't know that they could be on the same coaching staff. You know what I mean? Well, like yeah, because like, those mean, are two I, really strong headed personalities. Right. So. I mean, you and, might be able and, to, but and Gruden get, didn't get along with Monty Kiffin either. Yeah, because he yeah remember all the stories how Gruden Kiffin. was Gruden was jealous of how much pub Monty Kiffin was getting because of his defense, and it was you know mm-hmm. it, it, he was sort of hired as like hands off like it's Monty's defense you can't go over there and mess with it. Right, and that bothered Gruden. Everything bothered Gruden. You know, he's just he's he's John Gruden. He's like yeah. It's just a, he's a big baby. Yeah, here's the deal. Regardless if the Glazers wind up firing Cutter this year or not, I do not. I am I am a person who almost never, and this and this does not go outside that realm for me. Uh, wants to see us go backwards. We went backwards when we brought Lovey back. We said, oh, he was part of the old guard. You know, he's going to bring that that same mentality and that same whatever back, and you know that's that's going to be great. No, no, no. We were looking backwards instead of going for, you know, instead of looking forward. Uh, if right. we if we find ourselves in a coaching search again this year, um, I want it. I don't want to see us go backwards. I don't want to see us looking backwards. Um, I want to see us moving this franchise forward, because even if you bring Gruden back, you know, how long how long before he's gone again? Like, you know, and I'm not saying that we're going to have a coach that comes in for the next 20 years or something. Maybe we should. That'd be great. Um, I still think, I still think, honestly, overall, two years in, even with this year as crazy as it's been, you don't have enough data points before you to sit back and say that Cutter's not a good head coach. Yeah, I just don't think he, there's just not enough data points yet. Uh, you can't get that in two years. So, um, you yeah, know, and, and his offense is like ranked somewhere in the top ten, I think. Sure, and like total the, offense, he's like nine. Right, and, you know, he doesn't. He doesn't have anything to do with the defense. I know ultimately it lays down on his feet, but he doesn't have. He has nothing to do with like game plan or like he has nothing to do with it. It's all Mike Smith. Right now, listen. If we go over these next four games and we slide out of these next four games, 
and we go 0-4, which will put us 0-6 in the last six games of the season, we might have a different conversation then. Maybe. Yeah. Possibly. We'll have that conversation when we get there. But as of right now, I just don't think that we have enough data points to really uh, pull that trigger. I think you you we've got to stay with with Cutter. You you got to stay with the guy. And I'll go back to that. You can't keep firing people every two years. Uh, you know. Um, I don't like that narrative. Everyone says it and it's just, because it's just not true. Raheem got three. Shiano got two. Yeah, Lovey got two. But Lovey, they tried to give Lovey a third year. Mm-hmm. It's not like, hey, Lovey, you're fired. They tried to give it to him. They're right. like. You need to change. You need to fire your son, and you need to give up the defense. I'm not doing that. Okay, well, then you're fired. Okay. I mean, that's what happened. I mean, I don't know about the son part and give up the defense, but there were demands that, you know, like, we need these changes, and Lovey refused to fire, you know, the people he was loyal to, whoever it may have been, and it right. cost him his job. It wasn't like the end of year two, Lovey, we're, we don't. We don't believe in you anymore. We don't trust the process you're doing. You're fired. Lovey got himself fired. So mm-hmm. this thing every two years that keeps coming around, 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 it's just not true. One guy was here for two years, Greg Schiano. Mm-hmm. So anyway, go. sorry. I just wanted to say that. But even still, the the, the fact remains is that the, – There's this, been a lot of turnover. I, I mean this is what our fourth head coach in five years, six years, something like that. Um yeah, whatever the math on that is. But it, it, still, there's been a lot of turnover, and we, we, we just can't have that turnover. You've, you've yeah, got to stay with the guy. Um, although I would agree that if if it's not Cutter, uh, there are some other coaching changes that need to happen. And uh, we can discuss oh, that yeah. as we get towards the towards the offseason. Uh, but um, Tom closes up his email. Uh, saying, I'd love hearing your thoughts on this. Uh, we just gave those to you. He says, again, I love the three days a week show. Will you keep it up in the off season? <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> he says, I hope so. At least it's a place for fans to go to discuss and listen to off season priorities and look at ahead. Uh, we There's Ren, just not enough information. Right. I was going to say, Ren and I have not actually discussed the off season. However, uh, last off season, <laughs> we, did, we did one every other week, and yeah, it was weeks. a long show. It was like yeah, a three-hour like, long show. Yeah, three, three and a half hours. It, yeah, so I probably see us doing something similar to that again. We may actually run kind of like we did this week. We may record a three and a half hour show and just split it up. Um, but Could do it, that. yeah, it'll it'll it will not be uh, it, three times a week. We will not be going three times. There's just first of all, there's there's a rhythm to the season, and Ren and I both have lives outside of the Buccaneers. Shocking, I know. Um, but they're, you know, in football Breaking season, news. that's, you know, families understand and, and we kind of commit to this. And then the rest of the year, you know, we've got families we got to give you to. So, um, you know, but yeah, we, what's that movie? We've been talking a lot about movies, so I'm just going to go into those one in there. Uh, the one with, uh, oh, God, not Jimmy Kim. What the hell? Who's who's t- tonight show host right now? Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon and Drew Barrymore. Where he's oh. like the perfect boyfriend until the Red Sox season comes around. Right. Uh, first pitch or something like that. First, sure. Yeah, I don't know. One of those. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's like the best. And then baseball season hits and like he like just goes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> so. She should be a fan, too. Uh, <laughs> that's my that's my theory. I tell my wife all the time. I was like, you know, you can come on the podcast anytime. You can come send me. I'll give you a microphone. You can come join us. No, I don't want to do that. That's your choice. I'm going to go podcast. Yeah, I tried. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> tried. Um, but, uh, yeah, so probably won't keep it up. But the, the show, the shows change though. Um, you know what we do in the off season, we, we just downshift into different, um, yeah. uh, rhythm. So, uh, but yeah, the good question though, uh, <laughs> Ren, I guess I, we do have to start I, thinking about the off season here. Uh, I have. I've had it passing through my head every once in a while, yeah. and I just figured we'd do it like we did last year. Yeah. Honestly, it worked really it good. Did. It did. It, it but was, you know, it was. You know what it'll start with? What the Pewtercast Awards show giving out oh, some mini right. Lombardis. So you right. stay tuned for that uh, voting and stuff. Actually, we we got to get the we'll get everything set and voting will actually start here. Um, we're only four weeks away from the end of the season. All right, last email of the night, Ren. This comes from other Chris. And this is Chris from Alaska. Oh, all right. Yeah. There's three, right? There's one in Georgia. There's one like over in San Francisco. 
Yeah. Am I so right on be, that one? Yeah, and then we have uh, Chris in Alaska. So, Chris in Alaska. Uh, so this is Alaskan Chris. He says, glad to be back. Last week I was busy and not able to email in time. He says, I don't know where to begin this conversation. For the fun of it, let's start with the offense. He says, gosh, at some point you have to score more touchdowns than field goals. Thank you. This offense gets more predictable week by week. I thought Jameis played well in his first game back, minus the boneheaded play. That seems to be the common theme, doesn't it, Ren? Yeah, yeah. Jameis played well, <laughs> minus that one play. <laughs> minus the game, minus the play that cost us the game. Right. Uh, which allowed yeah. the Packers to score a defensive touchdown. Gosh, Trevor Sikama was right about the Bucks being fools to play Jameis with a makeshift O-line. I would disagree with that. Me um, too. Who would have guessed that Winston would have been sacked seven times? That was a little scary. I understand why Jameis needs to play to develop, but throwing your franchise quarterback in a fight or flight situation, um, but you're throwing your franchise quarterback in a fight or flight situation. Spoiler alert, most of the time he's flighting. (laughs) I've never heard it put that way before. Uh, I... I disagree with everything. All right, go ahead. And just keep reading. Well, no, I mean, there's not really much to talk about. I mean, we have discussed many times Uh uh, about our stance on putting Winston in and needs to develop and that type of thing. Uh, And once again, I know I've used this example a bunch of times. Go watch the Seahawks and the Redskins play. If you want to see someone, you know, you want to see fight or flight, go watch just Seattle. If you just watched it, he was being, you know, Russ Wilson has been like that for two years. It's part of the job. Those are your guys. That's who you're playing with. And then you can just take the the conversation further. Okay, you don't want to get Winston with hurt. Well, what about player X? We're going to sit McCoy. We're going to sit Evans. We're going to sit Jackson. We're going to you know mm-hmm. we're going to sit Doug Martin. Are we going to sit Brent Grimes? Are we, you know Justin Evans? Like it's it's not an argument. It just it's not going to happen. It's not an argument. It's and it's a poor argument. I, I see your logic. It's just wrong. It's just as far as an NFL player goes, it's wrong. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Again, I, I go back to say there is not a single person who is involved in football or has been involved in football at the professional level that has ever said anything different other than you play your quarter, your franchise quarterback when he's healthy. Um, and I, I agree with that. Uh, I, I get the idea of wanting to protect him, uh, but this is the NFL. You can't protect him. You, you got to. You got to play him. Uh, he goes on to say, he says, good job, Barber, for being the first running back for the Buccaneers to reach a 100-yard game in 11 games into the season. He says, I would talk about Evan Smith, but I'm too pissed off to even say his name. Psst, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> this makes me question the ability of our coaches to assess players in regards to the Pamphol and Smith debacle. Um Oh, Evan Smith. I, when yeah. you said that, I was thinking Justin, Justin Evans Smith. in my head. Yeah, no, no, no. And I'm like, I'm like, would oh, you say Justin Smith? No, 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 no. Evan no. Smith. Yeah. He's, For he's some reason in my head, Smith. I'm thinking Justin Evans. I'm like, why is he pissed at Justin Evans? Right. No, Evan Smith. Yeah. Uh, okay. A couple of thoughts in here. First of all, Evan Smith is a third string center on this team. Yeah, I, I keep saying it, and I'm going to keep reiterating it. He was a third string center. Okay, uh, what do you expect from a third string center? Evan Smith came in here and played center for a year, and we all cringed that entire year. And then I think he got hurt, and we magically went out and got Joe Holly somehow, and that turned out to be amazing. And then apparently he played hurt, and then wasn't able to get bulk or size or something last year. Uh, and then we moved Alley over, and you know Evans our third string guy. The whole thing with Pam Phil and Smith, uh, you know, I, I have a theory on it, and I don't like it, Ren. Are, are uh, you the theory of they're trying to lowball Kevin Pam Phil? No, no, okay. no. What is it? No, and I really hope I'm wrong, and, and please call me crazy if you think I am. I, You know, here's the deal. Evan Smith, I thought last year, mm-hmm. played really well in his backup role. Like it, okay. when Kevin Pamphil went down or when uh, Allie went down at some point in the season last year at right guard. Um, and even I think when Joe went down a few times and Evan had to come in and play center for a few snaps, Evan did a good job. Okay. At, and that in that backup role. And, you know, the, the phrase that Cutter used about this whole 
Evan Smith, Kevin Pimphill rotational thing is Evan Smith has earned playing time. Right. Okay. I think it's somewhere along the way. I don't want to say I think. I wonder. My theory is that at some point Evan has is, is kind of gone to his coaches or someone has gone and said, hey, we're paying him a lot of money because we are to be a backup and not really have much of a playing time. He's played well. He should be playing more often. And so, it, you know, it's kind of that like somebody made a stink about it. And so, like, they're kind of having to rotate him in there to to appease people. And and I hope I'm wrong about that, but I think I, to me that's that's the thing that ruggles around in my mind when the only reason that I can really uh, 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 justify this whole Evan Smith Kevin Pamphill thing it, it is somebody's made a stink about it, and so their compromise was, well, we'll rotate the guys around. Yeah, that's not the way NFL teams work. So yeah, you're crazy. I, you you don't. You don't get your way in pretty much any professional job by by c- crying like I'm not treated fairly. Uh, I need more money. I need more playing time. I need the corner office. It just doesn't work. So yeah, you're crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and it might not have been Evan Smith himself. It might have you know maybe a question between the no, owners. No, Brent, stop and, it. I don't know. Stop it. I don't stop. Know. I might be stop. crazy. Hopefully I'm crazy. He's only making he's only making four and a half million dollars. Yeah, only four and a half. Whatever. That's chicken scratch. Well he's he's, he's been playing for like that's like nothing for how many years he's been playing, which is like eight. Yeah, he needs to stop. Nah, I don't <laughs> if you're making four and a half million dollars to freaking practice three days a week and, and, and do three hours a day of classroom time to, to sit the bench, would you? Yes. I've already told you my replacements. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I get in. That's absolutely all right. Uh, moving on. He says the defense, they played a good game all in all, but they didn't make the stops when they meant the most. The Packers had a yeah. plan to run the ball down their throats and they did just that. Uh, he says, I don't know what Mike Smith is thinking. When something works, you stick with it and you don't go away from it. His defense is inconsistent because he is inconsistent as a play caller as scheming the game. Plan. I figured it out. Go ahead. Evan Smith went to Idaho state. That's where Dirk Cutter went to school. Oh. Wren, Sher- Sherlock Wren over here, ladies and gentlemen. Just figured it out. Um, yeah. Hercule Renro. The Gators actually play Idaho next year. And because uh, I always forget if Cutter played for Idaho State or Idaho. So I had to look it up But he uh, recently. But the, the Vandals are coming to, coming to town, mm. coming to Gainesville next year. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, well, I just thought, yeah, sorry, I yeah. was kind of dumb. The reason I brought that up is because I thought maybe, you know, it'd be a cool storyline for Dirk Cutter next year, you know, if he's on the job. Um, <laughs> you know, that his old college team's coming into Florida to play. There you go. There you uh, go. Let's see here. Uh, defense has talent but no heart to make plays when they need to. Um, I felt that way, too. I actually said that out loud at one point. yeah. I have a hard uh, time uh, saying people don't have heart. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's why I say the privacy of my house. <laughs> yeah. You know? But it was just yeah. one of those plays where uh, sort of like the K- Kamara play in New Orleans where one guy's sort of bringing the guy down and everyone just st- stand there looking at him and he gets – he wiggles away and dies forward for like an extra three, four yards and you're just like – you, you know, you, you need to stop like every yard counts mm-hmm. now instead of like second and eight. Now it's second and four because you're standing there watching. And, you know, uh, but like like you said, I don't like to call people no heart. But uh, there was a couple times on those last two drives where I was like, <laughs> you sons of bitches. Right. Uh, let's see here. He goes, yes, yes. Uh, he goes on to talk about our favorite coach cutter. He says, if the Glazers decide that cutter can stay for another year, he has to decide if he can go another year with Mike Smith as the defensive coordinator. I don't see Mike Smith back next year. And if that's the case, Dirk will have to make a business decision rather than a loyalty or friendship decision. Uh, I don't know. Okay. First of all, I don't know that that's true. Um, What's that? that I, if Dirk stays mm-hmm. and I, and I, at this point right now, I think he will. Right. I don't know that they would make him 
switch out of Mike Smith's uh, trade out Mike Smith as a defensive coordinator. Somebody's got to fall on the sword. Somebody does. I don't know that it's either one of those two. You think um, it's going to be enough to like get rid of Jay Hayes? Yeah. It, it, here's the thing. It it occurs to me that whatever weird mojo is happening with the team this year, it's not just the defense. It, it's this weird mojo, and all, it, it's with the whole team. So whatever, like, like however they're trying to figure it out, um, it, it's going to be something with with everybody, not just one over the other. And so I, I certainly think, uh, you know, a Jay Hayes, George Warhop type deal. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to be other coaches. I don't know that it's going to be, um, either one of those two. I'm just saying it's a realm of possibility though. Certainly, certainly you, the conventional wisdom would be, it's either clean house and restart the whole thing or yeah, we'll keep Dirk cutter, but Mike Smith has to go, and maybe we force Dirk Cutter to give up play calling or something like that, right? Um, that seems to be what what fans are clamoring for, anyway. Um, some fans, not all. Yeah. Some. Um, but I I'm just saying I don't I don't necessarily think that the two um, are mutually exclusive. Yeah, I you know I'm starting to teeter to the point where. I actually want Mike Smith gone, even though his track record as a defensive coordinator is exemplary. Mm-hmm. It's 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 very very good. He's been our defense coordinator for a year and a half, a year and three quarters now, mm-hmm. and the defense has been bad for just about all of it. You know, we had that five game win streak last year where you know I will admit the defense carried us through that. We didn't weren't scoring a lot of points. It was mm-hmm. all about timely turnovers, uh, some defensive scores. And but besides that, the last two games the defense stunk. Mm-hmm. You know of that season, the first eight games of that season the defense stunk, and the defense has stunk for what we've played twelve games. Mm-hmm. The defense has stuck for ten of them, nine, eight, eight at least. I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. really looking at the schedule right now, but so if not for a turnover-driven five-game win streak. It's been a disaster for Mike Smith. It really has. Mm-hmm. So, I, you know, I, I'm I'm getting there to the point where it's just you. It's it's tight. You know, Levy Smith came back and brought back the Tampa two, and mm-hmm. and all the old Bucks. You know, the guys are going in the hall now. Uh, Saps in, Brooks is in, but then you know you got Barber and you got Lynch. Like they all know, like like you can't run the 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 Tampa two exclusively in the NFL right now, because teams have figured it out and there's weaknesses in it and they'll just beat it. Mm-hmm. What if that's happened to Mike Smith's defense? Yeah. You know, yep. if it's just that's come to point. the point where the defense that he runs, that he based that his base core defense of strategy and scheme is just, everybody knows how to beat it now. Mm hmm. So, you know, I, I've certainly posited that on this show this season as have the other guys figured out Mike Smith's defense. So uh, that's a good point. That is certainly a good point. And that's going to be, uh, you know, I think that's going to be part of the, the yeah, conversation. Of the off season. Yeah. And it's going to be part of the conversation that has to happen between the Glazers and Jason Light and and even Dirk Cutter, you know, when they're when they're assessing this whole thing. So yeah. uh, he does go on to he asks questions like, who do you think they would replace him with somebody? A promotion from the inside the organization or a hire from outside? As far as you know, defense? Yeah, it, you're replacing uh, Mike Smith. All the uh, beat reporters point to Mark Duffner, the linebacker's coach. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's the guy uh, that I keep hearing pop up if it was going to come from inside. Once again, outside, I'd have to do a little research, honestly. Yeah. Um, you know, who's out there? Um, I probably would even extend it to college. Mm-hmm. Uh some college uh, coaches out there, but internally Mark uh, Duffner seems to be the one who it's uh, it's either him or nobody. It seems mm-hmm. to be, you know, sort of the, uh, um, the prevailing opinion, at least in the writer's room. Yeah. Yeah. I, that is certainly a name that I've heard on the inside, but I, I think probably most likely it'd have to come from outside. They're going to want to bring somebody in who, 
I can't imagine them wanting to promote a first year coordinator to the NFL given what they're coming off of right now. Like they're going to want to bring somebody in that's got some experience, which means they're going to have to go outside the organization. I don't know who it would be. I just, I think it'd have to be outside the organization. I'm not really sure that's true. You might not be. I haven't really thought about it a whole lot. So no, I mean, that's just my not first only reaction. that, if, if, if Duffner, uh, huh is a first is never been a defensive coordinator. Hmm. Where is the thought? Uh, he was a defensive coordinator for the Cincinnati Bengals 2001 through 2002. He was a defensive coordinator for the College of Holy Cross. Is that the Holy Cross, like by Notre Dame Holy Cross, I wonder? I don't know. From 81 to 85. God, that was a long time ago. Mm. So it's been uh, a while since he's been a coordinator. And doesn't sound like he did it very long. Uh, University of Cincinnati. He was a defensive coordinator from 1977 to 1985 in college. Okay. Uh and then he was head coach, head coach. Uh, then he went to the Bengals, linebackers coach, got bumped up to the defensive coordinator, um, and then probably got fired because he was a linebackers coach for the Packers, mm-hmm. then the Jaguars, then the Dolphins, and now us. Interesting. So, I'm just, he's just not a first time. When you said that, yeah. the first time, I'm like, I'm not sure that's true. But anyway, yeah. so there's mark dufter's background everybody there you go so maybe it could be him he says uh he goes on to finish up he says dirk looks defeated and has no clue what's going on and how to fix it i like dirk a lot and would like to see him remain as head coach but he's got to find a way to finish the season strong uh if he loses out meaning he would have lost every division game this year it'll be hard for the bucks brass to keep him on board another year not to remember as always go bucks uh, I think the Jameis injury still saves him. I, I, I am going to go with uh, Mark Cook on this one. I think it just depends on how the end of the season goes. Um, yeah, uh, but I think I think the Jameis injury gives him a lot of gives him a lot of currency that he wouldn't otherwise have. Let's put it that way. Um, but uh, yeah, I think we'll just we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see how how the end of the season goes, and we'll we'll get there. I'm not ready to I'm not ready to call it on him yet. So, well, Ren, uh, that is going to wrap up this uh, special little episode here. Uh, little fan interactions. In, I don't know. This one actually was longer than our our other other episode that we had uh, that came out uh, earlier this week. So, and that's why we broke it up. That is why we broke it up. Uh, but thank you to everybody who sent in emails and questions on Facebook, and uh, those of you guys that sent in reviews. Uh, very very much appreciate that. As a final reminder, you can always get in touch with us about anything that we have talked about regarding the Bucks. I do. I, I like the emails. They give us a chance to kind of bat around some different ideas. Um, yeah. Uh, or go into a little bit more depth. Uh, but you can always get a chance to talk about anything we've talked about this week. Uh, you can touch with b- touch base with us at facebook.com forward slash the Pewtercast or on Twitter at the Pewtercast. Or if you're more winded than uh, 280 characters, email us to the Pewtercast at gmail.com. Well, Ren, once again for this week, where can the fine people out there find you on the internet? Best ways on Twitter, uh, underscore Earth. No, that's not true. At <laughs> Uh, R E N underscore D A X T at Rendax. I'm always down to talk Buckner's football. There you go. Uh, and you can find me personally at Brent Allen Live on Twitter or on Facebook.com forward slash Brent Allen Live. That is going to do it for us for this week, uh, at least until Saturday morning, Ren, when we will have our Buck in the news show. That will be the show that we get a chance to wrap up all of the headlines for the week. We'll look at the injury reports and uh, as we kind of make the turn into the Lions game, the Buccaneers will be home with the Lions. If you're going to be at the game, give us, uh, give me a shout out. I'd love to see if I can't connect with you. I'm going to try to make it over to the What the Buck tailgate. I've got a buddy of mine who's coming as a Lions fan, and he wants to see the Tub Gators and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, with that, that is going to do it for us for this week. And until Saturday morning, go Bucks.